some very tiny snacks. Today, we will be looking at sound waves. Now, what are sound waves? Well, let's put you right in the corner over there, little fellow. And what are sound waves? Well, they are longitudinal waves. What are longitudinal waves? Well, also, say we have a slinky. Now, you can see two obvious points of compression and expansion, or rarefaction, as the fancy, fancy physicists call it. So, compression is this phenomenon right over here, where all the parts in the slinky get closer together. And then rarefaction is where they all get further apart, kind of like social distancing. Hey? Hey? And density. How would that affect something? Well, density, as you know, is mass over volume. So, as density increases, mass is going to increase. Think of it this way. Let's say that your density increases. That means your mass increases. And you get like a shadow. And then, you can't move. Your velocity, your max velocity is decreased. So, that means velocity goes down, just like it does in fish. Teeny little me over here is going to draw my messed up hair. And then you have the fattest fado that has ever existed in the history of fado. So, you have this. I'm only about 25 kilograms. The fattest fado in the history of freaking fado. Is 500 kilograms and really disturbing. So, so as you can see, he can barely walk. The only thing that can distract him is a McDonald's Happy Meal. But that's for another time. So now, the conclusion is: as density goes up, velocity. And now we're going to be looking at compression, which is another element in the velocity. Specifically, the velocity of Mr. McDonald's fatto over here. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's sadly the velocity of our family, not the velocity of Mr. Fatto over here. All right. So this second element is compression. Now, what is compression? Well, it's not me doing this. Well, that is me compressing my body, but whatever. This man, this fado definitely can't compress his body. But it's actually about, like, really, the particles and the order of the particles. So, let's say you have deadly nitrogen gas in your living room. Um, who has that in their living room? I don't know, some. So compression is near zero. And then, maybe you're a miserable loser. And while spinning around in your office here, you just knock down your entire damn cup of coffee. Ah, oh, what a mistake. Well, now you've got to still somewhat love. But now, what we see is the salt. So you broke in your damn coffee cup. How dare you? And you see, not only are they in a grid-like formation, and there's a lot of them, but they're also in order. So B is high to the damn sky. And the gas, of course, deadly, deadly nitrogen gas. And then this is your miserable liquid coffee spill. Kind of a de-escalation, really. And then... This is your miserable, broken damn coffee cup. Otherwise known as a salt. Alright. And so, these have different levels of compression. But compression is represented by B. And it's kind of like pressure. Because it's force over area. And now, let's just look at density units. Let's also pay a visit to the good old fatto right now. Alright, so density, let's look at the units in 
density. Well, since it's m over v, then, well, actually, we can say that, well, it's equal to m over v, but it's equal to kilo over volume is cubic meter. Oh, and compression is force over area, which is newtons over square meters, which is kilogram meter over second square, or this uh, abomination. Well, I think it would be this. Uh, yeah. No. Um, it would actually be meter over second square, and then you have this canceling out, giving you kilogram over second squared meter. Jesus Christ, this is an abomination. And now we know, now this is a real revelation because this actually helps velocity. And makes velocity go up, just like GameStop stocks. It makes velocity go way up. And so, that means it helps and it is actually proportional to velocity. While meanwhile, our density is inversely proportional. So, now, let's see what we can do. Because if we multiply 1 over mu rho, because this is how velocity is proportional to it, and we multiply that by b, that gives us b over rho, which would be our supposed velocity equation. But wait up a second. Let's see if the units add up. Because it's supposed to be meters uh, over seconds, meters per second, color is now in. We have just food color, the P, no worries. And now, let's put the monstrous units together in an uncomfortable marriage. So that would be kilogram over second square meter. We did a reminder to the above column. And then that's divided by a tense color. Please give us feedback. All right, and that would be kilogram or actually kilogram over cubic meter. And now we can use the A over B over C over D rule. Trust me, the name is wrong, but please stick with me, guys, to transform it to kilogram over second square meter times. Let's use the tense color. Once again, I need feedback from you guys for that one. Actually, we have to flip this according to the rule. And then we divide that by kilogram. And then we cancel that out. This is two. These are gone. And that leaves us with our final answer of squared over second squared. Meter squared over second squared. But this doesn't seem right. Wasn't it supposed to be meters over second? Well, we have lucky moves. Just square root it and you'll find your way to your answer. So, the equation we have to use is velocity is the square root of b over rho. Thank you everybody for watching. Professor Saborno signing out. Sorry, folks, we're gonna copy and paste. Oh, let's just steal this <laughs> and then copy and paste it again. Um, yeah, two water marks because this side deserves more. Oh my god, it looks wrong.